Howdy! Welcome back. Last video we wrapped up the, uh, or finished up the horizontal stabilizer. This video here will be jumping into the elevator, so it'll be section number nine of the build. So video number one for the elevator. One thing I wanted to mention real quick here before we jump on into uh, some time lapse or whatever the heck is going to come is uh, a couple of things with the parts. So I quickly went through and grabbed the parts that are listed on the first few pages just to get them ready, uh, uh, just have them out and available and really got thrown off by this. So all of the parts normally uh, come with this, this blue vinyl or whatever uh, protective coating that protects it from scratches, nicks and whatnot. Um, so you'll see here, these, these I removed them. Um, anyways, these parts here, so parts number 904, 903, uh, came with no protective coating and they look like they've been to hell and back. So it really threw me off. I thought I had like some secondhand um, previous builders uh, failed project. I, I felt, felt I had that like a used product. Um, and you'll see here why. Like it's, uh, some heavy scotch bright uh, sanding there. You'll see some really nice uh, wobbly profiles along these flanges here. Uh, so it really threw me off um, just having all that, which normally everything comes crisp and clean and perfect in those scratches. Uh, so I looked a little bit into it. It looks like the, the reason why is because these become these come from vans uh, partially prepped for you. So you'll notice this front portion here, um, it's already come dimpled. Uh, whether this is because it's a tight area and they know builders are going to struggle uh, with getting this dimple, just not having the tooling for it, um, or whatever the reason there is, um, it comes already prepped for you. So this part here, you'll see there are dimples on both sides in those hard to reach areas. Um, and then also this part here already becomes uh, uh, fluted or already adjusted um, to account for any kind of machine created bend in it. And this one's actually overdone. You'll see it's kind of going in the other direction, um, but it'll be easy enough to straighten up. But anyways, I was wondering why they're doing this and why, especially this one here, a builder could easily prep this on their own. Um, and I think it's because it's thicker. So I got the handy dandy Harbor Freight um, hydrometer here and you'll see uh, this one here is 0 0.03 inches uh, freedom units uh, thick. And these smaller ones, which this is the, the normal uh, material that they seem to use throughout the rest of the build, um, is going to be 0 0.02 inches. So um, it's a thicker material, so I'm guessing that because these parts here are thicker than the um, than what's most commonly used, they went ahead and did the, the, the heavy uh, prep work for you. Um, so if any builders out there get their material from vans and it looks like it's been um, to hell and back and on a container ship and thrown all around in the back of a pickup truck, that's normal. I definitely will prime this. Um, I probably mentioned in previous videos, I'm so torn on the whole priming thing just because we live in, in Phoenix here. Um, but this has definitely had that protective coating worn off uh, with the, the Scotch Bride or whatever they hit it with there. So these parts will for sure be primed um, just to account for that. Um, but yeah, I'll quit talking. We'll get to, um, to building this, these. Um, yeah, I'll quit talking. We'll get to building. Um, the first step here in the process is going to involve um, creating some elevator rims or actually taking the, these pieces here and cutting them down, um, cutting down between those notches there and creating two individual parts out of one part. So we'll get to that. I'll get the uh, bandsaw out. We'll cut these down at 16 total, so that'd be pretty fun there. Get them cut down, uh, we'll buff them all down on the scotch Brett wheel and we'll get to building an airplane part. So we'll get to it. Just wrapped up uh, profiling these down on the scotch bright wheel. You'll see they came originally as one piece. They were cut down into two individual pieces and then uh, they can be clicked together as shown here um, to make the actual elevator rib. So moving on to the next step. All right, so this next step here involves fluting 
Um, so if you're not aware, what that is, is uh, when these parts come stamped from vans, you'll see has quite a bow to it. So hopefully it'll catch up, uh, hopefully you'll see it on camera there. Uh, but it has that little bit of a sweep there uh, along the profile. So what fluting does is, is this tool here, and it takes a piece of material and it pushes that downwards into that cup there. Uh, so a finished example, I did this prior to filling, um, is the other one that I knocked out. And you'll see it is nice and straight. Uh, but the idea is it pushes material down, which in turn uh, brings that material in and uh, pulls the bow out of it. Uh, so I'll do this one real quick here on camera just so you can get an idea of what it looks like. Um, yeah, you literally just take it, um, make sure that the, you'll make sure that the, uh, the male portion is going into the material, not the other way around or else you'll have nice little bumps in your skin. Uh, but start on one end and get going. And uh, you can kind of uh, judge how much it's going to pull the material based on how, uh, how much you're doing it. So you could put a whole bunch of them in here and it would really pull it tight or just do them uh, like normal. So I went a little bit too far on those. What's nice is you can use these seamers and uh, pull some of that, uh, pull some of the fluting back out of it uh, to bring it flat again. So if you do go overkill, just know you can use your, uh, you can use your hand seamer. So what I did here is lined up um, the skin here to see if it's actually going to be perfectly straight. So this side is perfect dead on. All those holes are going to line up just looking down it. Um, and this side, you'll actually, uh, this side here you'll see is just a hair off. Um, so I went ahead and marked it. I'm going to go through and just add a couple more flutes, uh, probably hit it two or three more times um, just to kind of straighten that part up and we'll be good to go. And I think this is going to be the first part that is not final sized. It's not, uh, it didn't have any of the orange markings or any of the identifiers, um, but it is definitely undersized compared to uh, this Clico here. Um, it's definitely an undersized hole. Alrighty, I wanted to get a quick shot of what's going on here with this part. It's kind of cool. Um, what we're doing here is combining those two parts. So this is that part that was previously fluted. Um, this is the one that actually came fluted from Vans. Combining those, this outer skin, um, the skin strip here, uh, combines those two and makes it all one solid unit. Uh, so this is the first piece in the kit so far that has not been final sized. Uh, so it's my first, uh, first taste of uh, what it used to be like probably in the past for every builder who built an RV10. Uh, so I'm incredibly grateful to have a final sized kit because it is definitely more involved. Um, and there's quite a bit more resistance uh, with the with the Clicos going into the material when it's undersized. So we're up to step number one um, on page 9-3, so section 9 uh, for the elevators. So this section involves um, bending these closeout tabs on the top and bottom skins for the left and right hand side. Um, so you'll see each skin will have, um, I guess, opposing bends to where initially these skins are the exact same, exact same, just mirror image of each other. Um, so when you bend them, they then become a left and a right based on which direction you make that bend. Um, so we're going to be jumping ahead here. Um, you'll see here it says to use a uh, wood block and to start bending um, by hand using a small wood block and then finish uh, using a rivet gun. So we'll go ahead and get that done. Um, I'm going to show you my setup real quick here. Uh, I went ahead and removed that blue protective layer. Um, just on one side, I think it'll be fine leaving on the back. I'll let you know after this, uh, this first go here, but I just didn't want to scratch the back side of the skin. So I removed it here. 
Um, I will go ahead and tape the front of the rivet gun when I go ahead and get to that stage of, of hitting this with the front of the rivet gun. Um, but you'll see, uh, it's just two pieces of wood. This bottom piece, I went ahead and radiused it, similar to uh, when we made the rudder. Uh, there's a portion where we're bending the back portion um, where the uh, counterbalance weight went. Um, so, went ahead and did a similar type of deal. Uh, this one here was from then, it just wasn't long enough, of course, to reach across the table. Um, but I went ahead and radius this, this bottom piece of wood here um, ever so slightly just to prevent any kind of um, harsh corners that aluminum can't, uh, can't bend to. So it's really, really slight radius. Got that lined up, um, line it up exactly the way they said to with the line there in the manual, um, but I'm kind of favoring, I put the Sharpie line just on the outside. So favoring the Sharpie line just on the outside. Um, I'll let you know how that works. I uh, have a lot of hesitation when it comes to bending these. I'm um, just trying to get the, uh, if you want the line to be in the middle of the curve or the end of the curve. Anyways, I'll go ahead and get this done and uh, we'll see how it works. If that fan is annoying, I apologize there. It's only getting hotter and hotter and it's already 90 degrees. Uh, so this garage is gonna get really, really hot this year. Uh, going into summer in Phoenix. So I'm just pushing evenly across it, trying to make sure to evenly distribute the bend here. So I am using tape just to prevent any kind of uh, scratching on the surface of that skin there. Probably wouldn't be too big of a deal, but it's so easy just to tape these off and uh, prevent that scratching or marring or whatever comes from it. said to start with that and then finish up with a hand seamer to bring it to 90. Like I said, I said to fill it up or to finish it up with the hand seamer. Uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, finish that up. But you'll see that it went pretty nice. Like I said, I favored the Sharpie side by a hair. I, I, I literally took the, the width of that Sharpie line and hung out to the outside with it. This next one I'll probably just go right down the center because you'll see the Sharpie line is just a hair outside of the outside of dead center of the uh, the radius there. Um, but I think that should work out fine. All right, moment of truth. And that is perfect. So like the previous one, I'll finish up with the uh, hand seamer and we'll be ready for the next one. And the reason why I didn't do it on the edge of this table, you'll see when I made the table, I uh, routed it with a, a little bit too much of a radius than I want uh, for an edge here. So it's just kind of a sloppy radius. I think I used uh, a flap disc on an angle grinder, so it's not really a controlled edge. Didn't feel comfortable having a, a janky edge um, to be used. <laughs> I don't want to find a janky edge. I don't want to find a janky edge. Yeah, this one lined up way better. So with this one, I, I split the, the Sharpie line in half. It's still kind of favoring um, one side more than the other, but I'm kind of okay with that because in the drawings, it shows, it shows as far as a reference point, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera or not, but it, as a reference point, they're using um, this edge here so that, that front lip, they're using that as the first reference point. And then for back here, they're using the edge or the, uh, I guess the outward most, most part of that circle, if that makes sense. They're using that notch, the, the, the forward side of that notch, and then they're using the edge of that surface there. So you'll see the way mine was laid out. If I can find a ruler. So yes, I did kind of favor one side more than the other, but in the end, um, lining this up here on that edge, lining this up here on that front lip, you'll see it's perfectly down the side. So I would do that again. It's very repeatable. On to the next two. Look at those Crocs. So fashionable. Fashion statement. You see me camera? 
Sure can. Mm. <laughs> better be careful. I better watch out. Some lady out there who likes Crocs may be trying to... I think I'm safe. <laughs> maybe trying to find me. Alrighty, so all four of those skins are all folded on those uh, closeout tabs and ready to move forward. So I'm going to put you on a tripod here and I'll have a quick little time lapse. I'll be prepping the uh, front spar and moving forward from there. All of these are already uh, already final size from Van, so similar stories before. I'm going to check to make sure that they all fit together uh, correctly and we'll uh, move forward and start building apart. You'll see I have that spar clicked onto the skin. Clicko is going from the skin surface into the spar like the directions say. And then next step here we'll be creating these uh, or putting these ribs together which I'll show you real quick here. Um, then getting them clicked on. Uh, so if you remember a little bit early on, hopefully I think I got that on video, uh, but I cut these apart. Um, these originally came together and cut out the uh, cut out pieces in the middle. Uh, not that one. This one here. Anyways cut out the middles and we're actually going to be clicking them back together um, which brings them in tighter and get these click onto the skin surface and that spar there. So the other day I was able to get this tip assembly click coat on and uh, final size drilled along this top tab here. So I'm going to try to do the same thing over there. I have a short little bit of time in my day here, so I'm going to see how much I can get accomplished in the next 15-20 uh, minutes or so. We are back. Um, this is technically about three weeks after that video that you just finished watching, that time lapse video there. Uh, but not much has happened regarding the uh, the build in the last three weeks, um, other than finishing putting the uh, or at least clicking that skin, the top skin portion there on the elevators. Um, yeah, things got very busy. Real estate has been very busy. Uh, busy with family stuff. Actually, spent about a week in Mammoth Lakes in California, um, fishing, hiking, hanging out with family, and doing all that fun stuff. So yeah, not much has happened. You will see I do have a brand new fan there, thanks to Costco. Um, so I am ready for the Phoenix summer. It's already gonna be up to, I think it's at 115 degrees this next week or something close to that. Um, anywho, it's gonna get warm, uh, but we're not gonna let that stop us. We're gonna get right back into building, knock out these elevators and uh, keep on building a plane. So if you made it this far, really appreciate you watching. If you have any feedback, comments, concerns, or you just don't wanna say hi, do so in the comment section below. Uh, but anywho, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Adios.